in our previous tutorial, we looked at the JavaScript this keyword and how its value changes depending on where you're actually using it and where you're calling it from. And you need to have a good understanding of the this keyword before you start to look at the JavaScript bind, call and apply functions. So if you're not 100% sure on the this keyword and how that works, take a look at that previous video first. And in this video, we're going to go through the different functions that can modify the value of the this keyword, which is JavaScript's bind, call and apply functions. So we're going to take a look at the JavaScript bind, call and apply functions and see how we can use them to modify the value of this in different execution contexts. So we'll look at a few different examples and we'll start off with an abstract one and we'll move on to a more practical example in a moment. So first let's set up a basic object. I'm just going to give it two properties, A and B. And imagine we had a second object which had some functions inside it that perform some sort of tasks, for example, mathematical calculations. So if we were to call one of those functions, like the add function for example, although we don't get any errors, the a and b property on the this object is undefined. Although inside our add function, the this object does actually refer to the calc funcs object. So this is where we're going to use our bind, call and apply functions. And you can think of these as methods of borrowing functions from other objects. So whilst our calc funcs object doesn't actually have an A and B property at the moment, we can use the object that we defined initially to fill in those gaps. So what we're actually doing here now with the call function is we're saying we want to use the add function that's defined in calc funcs, but we want to set the context of this to the object that we pass into the parentheses of the call function, which in this case is the first object that we defined above. So you might be thinking within our add function, why did we bother with this keyword? We could have just passed in those variables as arguments to the function. And that's very true for this example, but we're just demonstrating how these functions work. And imagine if you wanted to use the A and B properties as default or base values, you can still pass in additional arguments to the add function. So when we're using the call function, if we actually want to pre-fill the C and D arguments for the add function, then we just put each value that we want to pass in as an additional argument to the call function. So we could then add those values to the sum that's returned in the add function. And we could then add as many of those additional arguments as we would like. So the apply function works in exactly the same way, except there's one difference in how we pass these arguments to the function. When using the apply function, rather than passing each additional argument separately, we pass them in as an array. So hopefully you can see how we're borrowing functions from other objects and how we dynamically update the value of this depending on the object that we pass into the call or apply function. So just before we move on to a more practical example, let's take a look at the bind function and see how that works. Whereas call and apply invoke the function directly and pass it back to our console.log, the bind function actually updates the value of this with the object that we pass in, but then it stores it into a variable, which we can then call later on. So this is useful if you want to update the value of this and then preserve that for a function later on. So there are some simple examples of using JavaScript's bind, call and apply functions. Let's take a look at a more practical example. So in the previous tutorial, when we were talking about the this keyword, we were using a similar user object that had a few properties set up and also a login function. So what if we wanted to keep track of the number of failed logins that the user has recently had? So one approach to this would be to set up a separate object that has a function which has the logic for updating the number of login attempts for this user. So here we've created a separate counter object, which has two functions, reset and next, and both of them take in a property name as an argument, and then they'll update that property name on the this object with either a zero or incrementing it by one respectively. So the login attempts property on our user object will be set as zero to initially. And then using that principle of borrowing functions from other objects, we can call the next property of our counter object 
and set its this property to our user object. So although this is a simple example again, you can see how the counter object contains some functions which are useful to our code and we can reuse them for different objects in different scenarios. To add to this, we could always use our counter object inside of our user object as well. So here within our user object, we've created a new logging counter property, which is just a reference to the counter object that we created earlier. And this time when the user fails to log in correctly, we'll borrow that function from the counter object and use it to update the login attempts property on our user object, which means we just pass in this with inside of our login function, as in here, because the value of this will refer to the user object itself. So in reality, the logic inside of our counter functions, including the next function, would be more complicated, but using this borrowing technique, we can reuse existing functions from objects and save having the same code in multiple places, making the overall code harder to maintain. So there you have some different examples of how to use the JavaScript bind, call and apply functions. Understanding these functions is pretty simple once you understand how the this keyword operates. And if you take away that the main principle of these functions is that you can borrow functions from other objects, then next time you find yourself rewriting functions in different parts of your code, maybe you can think about using bind, call or apply to reuse a function from an existing object. So that's it for this tutorial, I'll see you next time.